Katalin Koriko was born in Kisuizalish, Hungary, and grew up in a simple home that didn't have many modern comforts. Even with these problems, her desire to learn was clear from a young age, especially when it came to science. She didn't just take part in academic tasks, she did really well. In fact, she got third place in a national biology tournament when she was in elementary school. She went to the University of Seged because she was really interested in science. There, her hard work and determination paid off, and she got both a BSc and a PhD in biochemistry. This education set her up for a job in which she would later lead some of the most important advances in modern medicine. In 1985, when there was a lot of political unrest and trouble, Katalin Koriko found herself in a very important situation. The study lab she worked with in Hungary lost money without warning, which meant she might not be able to keep doing her important work. She knew she needed a new start and more chances, so she took the brave step of moving to the United States with her family. There were some risks on the trip. Katalin cleverly, hid money in a teddy bear because she knew she would have a hard time with money in the future. This was a symbolic act that showed both how smart she was and how determined she was. This brave action showed how dedicated she was to both her science work and the future of her family. At last, Katalin Koriko decided to focus her study on mRNA-based gene therapy after careful thought and observation. She wasn't just impulsively doing this, she knew that this field of study had the potential to change the world. mRNA, or messenger ribonucleic acid, is a very important link between DNA's genetic instructions and the proteins that make cells do most of their work. Corico thought that gene therapy could offer new treatments for many diseases by controlling and harnessing this process. This could change the way medicine is practiced. Not only did the idea of mRNA's changing ability in biology make her sure of herself, but new data and studies supported it even more. Soon, her focus would prove to be prophetic, paving the way for huge steps forward. Things were not easy for Katalin Koriko as she moved through the world of science. At the beginning of her study work, she faced a number of problems that tried how strong and determined she was. One of the worst setbacks was being turned down for multiple grants, which made it hard for her to get the money she needed for her important study. Her problems got even worse when she was suddenly demoted from the University of Pennsylvania, which is a top school where rank and respect are very important. This failure at work could have easily stopped many people, but not Corico. As a whole, the scientific community was skeptical of her efforts because they are very traditional and slow to accept new ideas. A lot of people thought that her focus on mRNA-based gene therapy was dangerous or even the wrong thing to do. Still, there is a bright side to every cloud. During this rough time, Drew Wiesman stepped in and became not only a friend but also a key partner. They put their knowledge and enthusiasm together to do groundbreaking work that paved the way for the groundbreaking mRNA vaccines. The work they did together had a lot of potential, but getting recognized was hard. Even though they had new and interesting data, well-known magazines like Nature and Science refused to print them. However, Corico and Wiesman were not scared. They kept going with unwavering dedication, knowing that their work had bigger effects. Their hard work and ideas later became the basis on which companies like BioNTech and Moderna built their now famous COVID-19 vaccines. This shows how important they were to science and to people in general. Scientists quickly looked to Katalin Koriko's groundbreaking work with mRNA as a source of hope and new ideas. Many people in the field thought that mRNA was too unstable or uncertain for medicinal uses, so its huge potential stayed mostly unused for decades. But Corico's unwavering commitment and careful study began to reveal the powerful skills that were hidden in these molecular lines. She showed that mRNA could tell cells to make certain proteins when it was designed properly. This discovery opened the door to a huge number of treatment options. One of the most important was its ability to help make vaccines. 
mRNA vaccines would teach cells how to make a protein that starts an immune reaction instead of putting a weak or dead germ into the body like standard vaccines did. This idea was completely new and opened the door to faster, more adaptable, and more effective vaccine development. Corico's groundbreaking ideas sparked new studies and made it possible for mRNA-based vaccines to be made very quickly in response to new threats like the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only did her work change the way scientists think, but it also gave people a powerful tool to fight contagious diseases. Kathleen Corico had a rough road in the world of science. Even though she worked hard to solve the riddles of mRNA, pushing the limits and changing the field, she was often met with doubt and skepticism. Prestigious magazines like Nature and Science turned down her important study because they didn't think it was good enough to publish. Not only did these decisions hurt her professional reputation, but they also hurt her deeply because she had worked hard on this project for years because she believed it could change lives. The University of Pennsylvania, where she had put her whole heart and soul into her studies, decided to sell the intellectual property rights to her work, which made things even harder for her. For Corico, this move felt like giving up on her. Not only was her hard work being used for profit without her knowledge, but she also felt like the organization she had worked so hard for had turned its back on her. This was a very bad time for her because she didn't feel like anyone was recognizing or appreciating her huge efforts. The world was in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, a disaster of a scale that had never been seen before that stopped businesses and societies in their tracks. In the middle of all the chaos and insecurity, Cutlin Corico's groundbreaking work in mRNA technology gave people hope. Even though she had to deal with doubt and problems for years, her unwavering faith in mRNA's promise would soon become the world's brightest light. The very technology she had pushed for was used to make the vaccines made by Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna. Not only were these vaccines another way to fight COVID-19, they were also a completely new way to vaccinate people. Usually, it took years or even decades to make a traditional vaccine. But because mRNA technology is so flexible and adaptable, it was possible to respond quickly to the new coronavirus. As countries rushed to get doses and start giving them out, the vaccines showed how well they worked. They were very important in stopping the virus from spreading around the world, stopping serious diseases, and saving many lives in the end. During this world crisis, Corico's work, which was once questioned, became the most powerful tool against the virus. Her vision, strength, and commitment were no longer hampered by doubt, they shone like a beacon in one of the darkest times in modern history. Cutlin Corico's unwavering devotion and groundbreaking study finally got the praise it deserved around the world. People in all countries and in the science community praised her for making important advances in mRNA technology. Among the many awards she has received, the most important was the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, which she shared with her colleague Drew Wiesman in 2023. This award wasn't just for their individual accomplishments, it was also a sign of how important their work was in changing the course of modern health. After meeting doubts and failures, Corico's journey ended with an honor that cemented her place in the pages of science history. Cutlin Corico steps away from the world's attention after changing the medical field and instead focuses on her studies. She goes back to her roots by attending the prestigious University of Szeged in Hungary. There, she will teach and study to help train the next generation of scientists. Her life is just as full when she's not in the lab. She shares important times with her husband, is proud of her Olympian daughter Susan, and is looking forward to the birth of her child. The media, fascinated by her story, keeps track of her impact through in-depth articles in the New York Times and thorough reports on the Daily Podcast, as well as through inspiring children's books and the long-awaited release of her autobiography. Awesome! By watching this video, you've earned an additional 10 minutes of knowledge towards a better life. Keep up the great work. Kiwi Echo, Lifelong Learning. 
please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and share your feedback in the comment zone.